All righty. You got me on? Well, amen. We're going to start our service, and I'm going to do it a little bit different tonight. Yeah, guys, you know, um, we got Dean one time for playing music, but um, Pam, go ahead and post that. We don't own the rights to this music. But I, I want to share something with you, and then I want to just take a few minutes and let us be thankful. How many of you know we need to be thankful? And uh, uh, yesterday, I was here working at the church, and um, I had a few phone calls to make, and we hired a um, guy to do some work to clean the steeple and clean the gutters, and um, I called him up, you know, I've been trying to get together with him so I could pay him, and he won't let me pay him. And, um, you know, and his name is Caesar. He says it different, but um, he says, huh? Caesar. And, uh, and I was talking to him, and he just, he had me crying in the car. You know, I was on my way home at that point in time, and he said, um, he said, oh, no, and he calls me Pastor Ricky. Pastor Ricky, we can't. He said, you can't pay me. He said, no, no, no. He said, you got to understand. He said, God is just too good to me. He said, Jesus, my Lord, provides for me. And, and then he started telling me this. He said, um, he said you know, I, I was somewhere the other day, and I was coming home. And he said, um, he said, I started thanking God in the car. And he said, God, I thank you for my feet. And I thank you for my back that is strong. He said, it got so good. I said, thank you, God, for my teeth, because my teeth are good. How many of you know? There's something, and I told him, I, I said, Caesar, I want you to understand something. I said, man, every time I talk to you, you encourage me. And he said, oh, no. He said, you the preacher. I said, no, it ain't got nothing to do with that. How many of you know we need to be thankful? So would you stand to your feet? And if you're out there joining us on Facebook, and I know some of you are, we're going to start it off just a little bit different. I just want you to thank God for everything that you have. You know, it's so important for us to be thankful. How many of you know you still got a job? You need to be thankful for your job. How many of you know if you're believing God for a new one, you need to be thankful already for the new one? And that's, the reason, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this. You know, with thanksgiving, access comes to all the things that God has for us. Thank God for your health. Well, I'm not as healthy as I once was. Well, how about thank God for the health that you have, and then let's believe God for your health to increase. Because where thanksgiving is, abundance begins to flow. It's a garden that causes everything that God's Word says we can have to flourish in our lives. So how many of you know, just be thankful. Can we lift our hands and just thank, turn the music up, and let's just be thankful? God is so good. You're so good to me, God. Thank you so much. I'm so thankful, Father God. Listen. Oh, you're so good to us, God, and I thank you so much. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father God. This is your opportunity just to shake all the stuff, all the access off. Excess, let me do it that way. Just shake it off. And just be thankful, God. I thank you. God, I thank you so much. You're so good to us, God. You're so good. Come on, just be thankful. Just be thankful. Oh, we thank you, God. Turn it up a little bit more, guys. Thank you so much, God. Thank you so much. Listen to this. Just be thankful. Just thank him. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Father. Your faithfulness, your faithfulness, God. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, Thank you, God so much. God, we... Come on, you know that song. Just sing it out to him. So good. Come on. How many of you know that's truth? Is so good.
I'm going to tell you, if you'll learn to be thankful, if you'll learn to be thankful, it changes everything. Will you say amen to that? So, Father, in this place right now, God, there's a lot of things that we could complain about. There's a lot of things that we could just murmur about. But God, there's so much that we can be thankful for with a heart of thanksgiving. It changes everything about our circumstances. We honor your presence here, Father. <laughs> we thank you so much. Because you are so good. Would you say amen, church? Amen. How many of you know, that song just dropped into my spirit. You know, it's one that I ride around singing. You can be seated. And let's go ahead and let our offering king take up the offering. Give him a hand, y'all. He's good at what he does, and um, we'll, we'll let him take it up, and we'll get into the word here. I uh, want to welcome everybody. Thank you so much for your faithfulness to the church. You know, we, we have um, graduation of our college coming up this Sunday, so I'm going to change uh, the sermon just a little bit because, um, well, I feel led of the Holy Spirit to do it. That should be enough reason. And then we'll get back on our normal teaching after this week. But I got a series, guys, that's burning inside of me and I think I'm going to set a little bit with, with the rest of things that we do and the rest of what we do on Wednesday nights until I start that. We're going to be doing a little, little bit of setup with it because um, I think it's important um, at this point in time for us to understand where we are in time, not only uh, where we are, but what's going on and why we're seeing some of the craziness take place that we're seeing you know, in the world today. And it's not just, how many of you know this is not just centrally lo located to one place? This is a worldwide thing. So a stage is being set. How many of you know that? Now, I don't want to, I'll, I'll be teaching on that on Sunday morning here in a few weeks, but um, we're going to continue on with unfolding salvation. And if you will, turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to start in verse 8, read through 11. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 through 11. And I want you to see this because we've been talking about how when we honor God and when we begin to, to do what the Word of God says we're supposed to do, and we're going to look at some things a little different here in just, um, than we normally do in just a few minutes, but how many of you know more of God's goodness begins to unfold to us? And no matter how long you've been serving God, and I know some of us, you know, I'm 35 years that I've been saved. Some of you have uh, been serving longer than I've been alive. <laughs> I'm just joking. There are some people out there that have. You know, they've been a Christian Longer, and I, I even had a preacher one time look at me, and, and I'd been pastoring for over 15 years, and he said, oh, you're just a young whippersnapper, you know, when it comes to being a preacher. And I was thinking, okay, I'm from the South, so I know what a whippersnapper is, and I'll take that as a good thing. And, uh, you know, so, we, but we, we, the more we get involved in what the Word of God has to say, the more we have the opportunity to see salvation unfold in front of us and to see good things begin to happen, guys, and God never ceases to amaze me. And can I make this statement right now? If he ever ceases to amaze you, you have a problem. Because God is an amazing God. And we should never lose our freshness. And we should never lose our, excite, you know, our excitement about him. Come on, amen. And we should always have new stuff happening, God stuff happening, every day of our lives. And you should never be bored out of your gourd Christian. Because all you have to do is obey the word, do what the word says, and I guarantee you, you will not have time to be bored. Well, amen anyhow. So Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 8, I'll give you plenty of time to get there. It says, for you were once darkness. How many of you would say amen to that? How many of you remember those days? Don't, don't still live in those days. <laughs> live in those days, you know, but I remember being darkness. And this is what it says, you, for you were once darkness... And it says, but now you are light in the Lord. Listen to this, guys. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Verse 10, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Now, this is, this is something I'm seeing happen more and more. I'm seeing people go on Facebook. How many of you know Facebook is a wonderful thing, but yet a terrible thing? 
It's one of those things to where, you know, you feel like you don't want to mess with it anymore, but then you lost without it because it's so interwoven into our lives now, you know, in Instagram and all these different things, you know, that, that we live by now these days. And I'm seeing it happen. People who stand for truth are being actually scolded by other Christians because they take a stand for what the Word of God really has to say. And it's amazing to me. And I, and I mean, I, I, I do this. I had one person, you know, on mine one time that I made a comment, and he came back and made a comment, and he got all mad at me. And I knew this guy. Well, you know, I, I ended up blocking him so he couldn't make comments, and he unfriended me, and I don't feel bad about it. Do you understand? Because I took it as a, as a you know, a badge. I mean, I got, I got a trophy, you know, and uh, because I'm going to stand for what God's Word has to say regardless of what happens. So we're going to talk a little bit tonight about, let's go back to this verse of Scripture, for you were once darkness. Did you know you were, this is what it says, you were once. Everybody say it with me, were once. That means we're not supposed to be in darkness anymore. Oh, come on, y'all. I mean, we shouldn't be in dark. I should not be playing around the edges of darkness. I don't want to be back in darkness. I've been there, done that, no fun. Come on, y'all. I've, I've had to take a pill to go and take a pill to sleep and take a drink to get up and take a drink to survive, you know, and do drugs to make it through and, and, and find my happiness at the bottom of a bottle or, or, or you know, in, in some type of drug or something like that. And I can tell you right now, it's a never-ending cycle of defeat. And when I got peace in my life, when Jesus come into my life, it changed everything. And I thank God I don't have to live according to that darkness anymore. And I don't want to go back into darkness. Do you understand? I mean, I'm, I'm done with darkness. How many of you say amen to that? Well, this is what it says. You were once darkness, but it says this. Now, but now you are light in the Lord. Well, here's the thing. You have to learn how to walk different if you're going to walk in light. Because how many of you know walking in darkness... You pattern yourself after everything to do with darkness. But walking in light, you have to pattern yourself after everything that God says is light. And any time, you know, I've, I need to be really careful here, but I work in restaurants, you know, in my business. And, uh, and there's been times, guys, that, that, you know, everything looks really good until you go in there and the lights are off. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And then when you flip the light switch on, they run everywhere. How many of you follow me? Because they, they don't like the light. Do you understand? Those little roaches don't like the light. They love to congregate in darkness. Do you, do you understand? There's something that they enjoy about darkness because it's not visible. And we're not supposed to be living in the darkness when we're told that we got to be light. So we, I'm light, you're light, and we have to learn to walk according to that. And once we do that, then we start seeing the flow of God take place in our lives. And salvation begins to unfold. Everybody say it unfolds. This is what we're talking about. It unfolds unto us. I'm still learning. I hope you all are. I mean, we are. I'm, I'm still learning some things. Listen to what it says. But then it says, now, and I put this in there, walk as children of light. The, there's, you have to make the choice to live free. I mean, you really do. I, I could go back and pick up anything that God set me free from at any point in time that I would make a choice to do it. The difference between me going back and doing it and not is a choice I make every day. And let me tell you, it, it's not a struggle for me to do right. All right, and it's not a struggle for me to want to go back and do wrong. Because once you learn to live in the light, your life adapts to that, and light is what fulfills you. This, and we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit further, because um, when, I, when I get into the next one, I want, I want to share something. Pam, well, I'll go ahead and do it now. Pam, um, we were on the way to church on Sunday, and uh, she said, uh, hey, look, I got this thing, David Wilkerson. She said, would you like to listen to one of his sermons? And I don't think I've ever listened to any of his sermons, you know. And um, so we started playing it. And he made a statement, man, that has just shook me to the core. Have y'all ever had just, I mean, the whole sermon, you know, was about, he was mad at seeker-friendly churches. You know, and he was talking about going and getting a 20-minute sermon and going home and not being changed. I mean, he was just on it, man. And he said, you'll go and you'll eat that 20-minute sermon. You know, and he said, not change at all. You know, just end up living like the devil. I mean, he's going on. 
But then he made this comment, and I want y'all to hear this because, and, and some of you maybe heard it, but then he made this comment, and it, it actually went through me. It was one of these things where, you know, you can hear some things, and some things affect you, but this one was like a beam of light that went through me. And this is what he said. He said, a lot of people today are not living in the victory that God says they can have because they went to the cross and were not supposed to go to the cross. We're supposed to go through the cross. Think about that. And when he said that, he said, here's the problem. We got people that kneel and say a prayer and they get saved and they stop at the cross. They go to it. They make it to Calvary. But he says, the Bible says you got to die with him. He said they never go into the tomb. So they never end up being crucified to self. Think about this, guys. And then if they're not crucified themselves, and he goes on and says, take up your cross and follow Christ, then you never come into resurrection life. And resurrection life is where you get free from all the things that used to attach to you. And man, when he said that, I mean, it, it just shot through me like a beam of light because, you know, I, I see it over and over again, guys, where people get saved, but nothing changes because they go to the cross and not through the cross. They don't go further. They get saved, and that's what we're talking about, guys. They get salvation. Come on, y'all. All of y'all been through the cross. I know that. But they get salvation, but they never go beyond Calvary and get resurrection life. They never get delivered. They never get free. They never die to themselves. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. You know, I could preach right there because it's a challenge for every one of us every day that we need to let a part of our own desires and our own selves be crucified and get rid of some of this stuff that we're struggling with. But listen to what he says. Walk. Everybody say walk as children of light. The choice is yours to live free. For the fruit of the Spirit, listen to this, y'all, is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. And then it says this in verse 10, and this, this just really, you need to think about this. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. So how many of you know we, we are responsible for activating the Word of God in our lives and then allowing the Holy Spirit to speak into us to change some things because God knows what's best for us and what's not best for us. Come on, y'all. And it may be different for different people. You know, Pam always, she makes, she makes fun of this sometimes. She wasn't allowed to go to movies growing up because it was wrong. Now, how many of you know other people it's not wrong to go to movies? I mean, it was a personal conviction of her mom and dad. Well, you know, we work out our own salvation, and sometimes we use that as an excuse to do whatever we want to do, but it also goes on to say with fear and trembling. So see, that's when you go through the cross, when you allow God the right to speak into your life and say, hey, I know everybody else may be doing this, Rick, but it's not proper for you to do it. You know, I know everybody else can, can go and do this, and it don't affect them at all. Come on, y'all. I don't mean to be so free so hard, but it's so good. Anyway, uh, but, but here's the thing, guys. We never allow the Holy Spirit to say, hey, stop. Just stop. Just quit it. Just let me speak into your life. I got something better than what you're accessing right now. Yeah, you're saved, but I got, I got newness of life. It can flow in, in, oh, man. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. You know, fear and trembling, we've lost that in the church. Man, we, we, need, to, we need to have some reverence for God and actually think, let God speak into us about some things. You know, I, I'm going to share here in a few weeks, you know, about something that just recently happened to me that concerns the church, you know, and, and I had made up my mind to do something and, and uh, you know, and sought wise counsel and, and, and really been praying. And then I had a vision one night that changed everything. And a word came the next day. And how many of you know it changed everything for me? And it would have been totally fine to do it. But I knew for us it was wrong. Come on, guys. I knew for us it was wrong. This is, this is what we're, we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. 
All right, and then he, because you got to understand, God knows the future and he knows every trap that's set. He don't lay them out. He never sets you up for defeat. Do you understand? So he knows what's been set. And if you'll listen to the Spirit of God, he'll lead and guide you so you step over some of these pits or maybe not even take that stinking road. <laughs> You know, where, where the ditch is or where the bridge is out, you know. And that way you don't have to come back and wonder whether God did it or not. If God talked to you and told you it was out and you go ahead and run off the bridge, it wasn't God that did it. Well, anyway. Verse 10, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And then it says this in verse 11, have no fellowship. Everybody say fellowship. How many of you know, somebody tell me what fellowship is you hear tonight. Come on, somebody tell me what you think fellowship is. It is not Bojangles chicken in a picnic. That's a part of it. Okay, or Kentucky Fried Chicken in a, in a picnic. All right, what, what do you think fellowship is, guys? You're hanging out with people, isn't it? I mean, you, you get together with people. You know, this is the thing. This is one of the biggest things that's an attack on the church right now is the fellowship has been broken, and there's some people... They, they connect in such a way through fellowship to where it activates them to go on and live better for Jesus than it would if they would live alone. And this is one of the things that's happened, guys. This attack that's going on right now is trying to break the fellowship of believers because the enemy knows that if he can get you separated from the flock that you're supposed to be gathering with, he's got more of a chance to take you out and cause you harm. And I've got to say this at this point in time. You need to shake the fear off. And do what the Word of God has to say. It says this, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. We are supposed to know what's right and know what's wrong. <laughs> Come on, y'all. I mean, it shouldn't be a question of whether it is or it's not. We are light. Everybody say amen to this. We are light and we walk that way. So uh, unfolding salvation means I give God the opportunity to speak into all the areas of my life and I don't keep some rooms that are locked up that he can't go into. Well, hallelujah, anyhow. I didn't know it was going this way. First Thessalonians 2, and verse 13. First Thessalonians 2, verse 13. Listen to this. For this reason, we also thank God without ceasing. This is, this is something, guys, we need to get better at, is being thankful. Thank you, God, for my teeth. Amen. <laughs> thank you, God, for my hair. What I got. <laughs> thank, thank God, you know, that we can see. Thank God. Guys, we have cars. We were just in Pennsylvania and the Amish still riding horse and buggies. Thank God I got a car. And electricity. And running water. <laughs> the hot running water, too. Listen, it says, For this reason we also thank God without ceasing, because when you receive the word of God which you heard from us, I love this, guys. Listen to this. You welcomed it not as the word of man. This is the thing, guys. We've got to understand this word, when it is spoken, when it is preached, is the word of life. This is not something, I, I don't get up here and just talk to talk. How many of you know, I, there's, you know, I have people come to me after service and they tell me this, and I never intend this, you know, it's not my job to step on anybody's toes. How many of you know what I mean? But I have people come out and say, I mean, they'll look at me and they say, oh, man, you got my toes bad today. And I'm, I, when I first started hearing that, I looked at them like, I wasn't even close to you. How did I get your toes? But then I started realizing that's something that people say. I learned this years ago. When they get convicted of something in their life. Well, now, I just heard a new one, and, and I hope I don't offend nobody by saying this, but um, the person told me, said, every time I come to church, I'm wore out when I leave. And I'm thinking... Well, that's not good. And then the person told me, no, it's good because I'm hearing things I've never heard before and absorbing it just tires me out in the natural. How many of you know this word has to be received? It has to be accepted. Come on, y'all. If you want more of God to unfold to you, 
then you've got to receive what God is saying. You've got to receive the Word of God into your life to a point to where you allow things to unfold in front of you. And it's, it's amazing what happens when you just receive what the Word of God is saying with joy. Listen to what it says. You receive the Word of God, which you heard from us. You welcomed it not as the Word of men, but as it is in truth, the Word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. Here's the thing, guys. If we welcome it, it activates inside of us, and we'll notice it begin to work. And, it, and I love this. The Word of God will work on us privately, but how many of you know it works out of us openly? This is the thing. I mean, I've, I've been in stores, and, you know, and, I, and I think some people think I exaggerate stories sometimes, but I do not. But I have been in stores before where people will walk in and talk to everybody in the store, and I'll be working on the cash register behind the counter, and they'll come up by me and growl. Like a dog. Now, y'all, that's just not natural. And, you know, every time, and I've had it happen multiple times. And whenever it happens, you know what I do? I, I keep working on the register, and I look over at them, and I say, I bind you in the name of Jesus. You'll not function around me. Mm, they'll turn around and walk off. They'll turn around. I won't let them. I won't let them. You know what? And if they, if they manifest anymore, don't think I won't jump across the counter and cast the devil out of them. I mean, because I know. I know this for a fact. I got power over demons. And they can't survive in my presence because his presence is in me. Come on, y'all. This is what I'm talking about. We can, we can do this. Now, let me show you some of the things that, um, if we're not careful, that can happen in our lives. And I pointed these out a little bit. I, you know, I took a, Pam and I were gone for a week, so I'm just catching you up a little bit on some of this stuff. But if you will, turn to 2 Timothy 3. We're going to start off in verse 1, read verse 1 through 7. I did a Facebook post the other day, and I've been preaching this for a while. And it says this, and, and I'm going to read it and comment, and then we'll come back to it and read it again. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. How many of you can say amen to that? Did you know we're living out things right now that people before us hadn't lived, <laughs> hadn't lived out? We're seeing some crazy stuff happen right now in the world. And I'm telling you, perilous time, times are on us. How many of you know that? They're here. But what they are right now is nothing compared to what they're going to be. And you need to be aware of that. This is why the church has got to man up and be everything that we're supposed to be because I'm telling you, science is not going to be able to be the answer. Doctors are not going to have the answer for this stuff. Politicians, we already see that, don't have the answer for this stuff. And, and we're going to be the ones that are going to have to speak calm into the midst of chaos. But we can only do that if we got peace in our own selves. Because if you're a part of chaos, you can't release peace. So the church has got to do something different. Give me a big amen. We got, we got to transform, and we got to be what God says we, we are supposed to be to make the difference in this whole situation. So in the last days, perilous, perilous times will come. And then verse 2 explains why they come. And this is what I need you to understand. God is not in charge of perilous times coming. Man is in charge of perilous times coming. And it says this, for men will be lovers of themselves. Well, when you just love yourself, and all you care about is yourself, how many of you know it creates chaos for everybody else because you're going to do just what you need to do for you? You're going to take care of you. Well, I was, um, you know, and I teach, I, I actually teach by example, guys, and, and I don't say this to my own horn, but we, were, we went, one of our restaurants opened up that we love to go to at the Magnolia Mall in Florence is the Magnolia Walk. And uh, I love Chinese food. And, uh, but she just piles the plate up, and Pam and I go in, and we get one meal with three different items and a plate and two drinks and two egg rolls. And we sit down, and I got enough to last another meal to two meals. That's how full she piles it. So we're standing there because we're having the social distance. You know, I'm standing on the square there's somebody on the square in front of me, somebody at the counter. Pam went and got us a table, and I stepped up to the next square. Can I tell you all I hate stepping in squares? Can I tell you all that? Do you all realize that I hate standing on X's? I told you, don't watch Looney Tunes and stand on an X. It'll defeat you. 
you know something's coming. Do you understand? But anyway, I stepped, I stepped on the X, and the, people, the couple in front of me, I could tell that I don't know whether it was their first date or they, they, they were just learning one another. I don't know, and they were talking back and forth, you know, and I had a conversation with them, and they stand up and they order their food, and she makes them pay before she dips it up, you know. So she said, you want this, this, and this? He said, yeah. And, uh, and she rung it up, and, I mean, it ended up being like $17 or something, 16 or $17, and the guy pulled out a debit card, and they don't take debit card. They only take, they only take cash. You know, and he said, um, well, I don't have any cash. And I saw a girl turn and look at him. And I'm thinking, if this is a first date, this is not going well. And how many of you know I'm for men succeeding? Well, the right way. Do you follow me? And uh, so I, I stepped up, you know, off my ex. I'm glad nobody didn't get at, mad at me. And I asked the girl, I said, how much is it? And she told me, I said, um, how about giving the food? It's too good to leave. And I said, I'll pay for it. And they couldn't believe it, man. They turned around, and, you know, the girl, she, turned, she looked at him, and he thanked me, you know, and she turned around, and she said, thank you. And I said, oh, you're welcome. I said, y'all enjoy your food. Now listen, guys, you know, this is, this is something that we should be able to do. Do you understand? We're supposed to be doing good for people. We're supposed to be helping people out. I don't know, they may end up getting married at some point in time. And maybe my meal did it. <laughs> Save the romance, baby. Come on, y'all, but if you're just a lover of yourself and you never care for anybody else and you never put yourself out on the limb anymore to try to help people, guess what you do, guys? You're creating perilous times because you're not operating according to the Word of God. I cannot become so selfish that I am the only one that I take care of. We have to as Christians. Come on, y'all. Give me an amen. Care for those around us and do it the right way and the right spirit. Listen to what it says. They'll be lovers of themselves. Listen to this. Lovers of money. Hey, can I ask y'all a question? Will you be honest? Are you going to lie in church? No. How many of you really like money? Come on, y'all be honest. How many of you? Now, now I'm going to ask another question. I'm going to take it to the next level, okay? Pan the camera. No, I'm <laughs> just joking. How many of you really love money? Come on, y'all. I like it. I, I do. You know what? I, I, I'm like Jesse Duplantis. I've been, I've been poor and I've been rich. Rich is better. Which I ain't rich, but I'm just saying. I like having money. But now, how many of you know the Bible never says that money is evil? Oh, come on, y'all, because we can't do what we're supposed to do without it. I'm going to tell you right now. I mean, I could go out and hunt my food. Pam would have a problem with it. If I start bringing squirrels in, I don't think she's going to eat a squirrel. Or a cat or a dog <laughs> or anything else, you know. So, so money is good. And the Bible never says that money is bad. Listen to this, guys. Listen to this. It says very clearly, the love of money is the root of evil. Do you understand? Because if you get it to a point where all you want is money, then you've lost what God says you're supposed to have. And how many of you know, if all you go after is money, you're going to create some perilous times in your life? Oh, well, I'm not going to do every one of these, but anyway, boasters. Listen to this, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Don't you wish you'd read this more to your kids? Unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong. Anybody ever had anybody in your life? Even you just headstrong? You ever had anybody headstrong? Come on, y'all. You, you ever met anybody that's headstrong? No matter how many times you tell them something, they don't care. They just don't care. They're headstrong and doing it their own way. They just, they just going to do it their own way. You know, and, and there's some, there's some, I tell people this. You can learn by listening or you can learn by doing can I, can I say this? Learning by listening is a whole lot easier on you than learning by doing. Because some lessons are very tough.
to handle. We had a tree fall one time, and um, I didn't have a chainsaw at that point in time, so I, I went out and I purchased an electric chainsaw. Now, how many of you know, you run the cord out, you know, and I mean, it cut good and everything, and I, I had never handled one. How many of you know, um, I should have hired somebody to cut a tree? But I was cheap. I had two kids and a wife. Figured we could clean it up, right? So I get out there and I'm comfortable. I get comfortable. Everybody say that word, comfortable, with the chainsaw cutting up. And uh, I pick up this limb and I'm not even thinking. I hold the limb, I put the chainsaw in the Y, hit the trigger, and it bounced up and cut the end of my finger off. Now, how many of you know that was a lesson? But my wife, you know, it happened and I had three fingers go numb. So I didn't know, I had gloves on, so I didn't know how bad it was. Well, you know, I told Pam, I said, I got to go to the house. I, I didn't tell him nothing about it. Well, on the way up, I, I took the glove off and I looked and I saw the one finger hanging, you know, kind of, my pinky was not right. And I pushed it back on <laughs> and it didn't stay. So how many of you know, now I'm in a different frame of mind and I can handle a lot. So I'm walking in the house getting white, tur. And, and my wife comes up behind me and says, you know you're bleeding. And I'm, I can't answer her, man. And I go in. I'm, now, how many of you know, I bought a $40 chainsaw, and we ended up cutting that tree up. But I learned a valuable lesson. You got to know how to handle the tools you buy. Come on, y'all. You can learn by listening and hearing what God has to say, or you can be headstrong and learn a different way. Listening is better. Can I get a big amen? Did we do without self-control? Yeah, yeah, we did. I'm not going to do that one. Headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And listen to verse 5. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. See, there is such a thing as a form of godliness to where people actually get to a point to where they can think they're right but they haven't accessed God. You know, and the reason why I know this is because Jesus said there'll be some in that day that will say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Did we not cast out devils? Listen to this, y'all. In your name. Didn't we do wonderful things in your name? And this is what Jesus says. Depart from me. I never knew you. You knew me. but I didn't know you. Doesn't that go right in line with, hey, people come to the cross, but not through it. Not through it. To gain that relationship. Think about this, guys. This is tough, and I know it is, but I, I, want, you, I want you to see this. And it says, they have a form of godliness, but denying its power. In other words, they want to they wanna have the show of godliness, but... The power is not present to deliver and to keep free. And then it says this, and from such turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captive, captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts. Verse 7 is where I wanted to get to. That wasn't even part of the sermon. You got that for free. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Can I get an amen there, guys? Listen to this. Always learning something, trying to learn a new formula, reading a new book on prayer, but never praying. Come on, y'all, learning about being the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, but never living out righteously. Think about this, guys. Studying on how to get rich but leaving the principles of God out of it. See, it works. The concept is there, but God makes it much better when you do it His way. Well, amen. Can we do something more fun? Well, one of the ways that we're going to unfold salvation is by growing. Everybody say that word with me. Growing. How many of you know, I'm good at growing. 
in the natural. All I got to do is eat wrong, and I guarantee you, I just grow like crazy. Y'all don't look at me that way. You know it's true. How many of you know you can eat Krispy Kreme donuts every day of the week if that's what you want to do? But can I tell you something? You're going to have a donut right here eventually. If you're not careful, if you don't work at all. I heard Jesse Duplantis say this years ago. He said, you know, you can eat like a horse if you want to, but you better work like a horse for it not to load on you and stay there. Well, amen anyhow. Didn't know I was going to be talking about food. Is it time for a donut? So we got to grow. Let's talk about growing just a little bit. Well, how do we grow? Unfolding all of God's promises and all that God has provided is you're going to have to grow into some of these things. Now, when, we, when I first got saved and Pam and I had been married for just a little while, I started understanding that I was called to be a pastor. Now, how many of you know that's just not something that you step into? That's something I actually served underneath a pastor for 10 years to learn what it was to pastor, and I learned it from the ground up. Does everybody follow? I mean, I did. I learned it from cleaning the toilets, working in the nursery, I mean, sweeping up the bugs, you know, doing whatever you had to do. I mean, I learned it from the floor all the way up and still are growing in that and still not above sweeping up a bug. I need you to understand that. I mean, I, I mean that's the way. So I, I learned it that way. And but when I was being called to be a pastor, how many of you know you get what's called preacher's itch? Anybody ever heard that before? And what it is is I'm ready to pastor I want to pastor, but I'm not ready to pastor. Let me say it that way. Because there's some things I still got to learn. Because y'all people, you, if you're not careful, people are just people. And they don't see things like you see things. You know, in some of the places that, that we've stepped into, I mean, it's been a challenge just to deal with, can I, y'all let me be honest, People. You know, so the preacher, he calls me up front to church one day, and he, he says, um, you know, you're anointed, and you're anointed to be a pastor. And he said, I, I can see the anointing on you. But he took his coat off. Now, you've got to understand, when I first got saved, I weighed 135 pounds. You know, and he was, he was bigger than me, and he took his coat off, and he handed it to me, and he said, put this on. And I put it on, and it swallowed me. It was just too big. Sleeves were hanging down, you know, and... I could button it up and fit probably two or three of me in there. You know, and he said, what you need to do is relax a little bit. Because right now you have the anointing, but you haven't grown into it. He said, and it may not fit right now. Now, how many of you know this is a tough word to receive in front of people? Come on, y'all, seriously. This is a tough word to receive, but a necessary word. He said, so relax. He said, eventually, one day you're going to put the coat on and it'll fit. But he said, right now, it don't fit, but you'll grow into it. Now, how many of you know, a lot of people would have said, that stinking preacher and just stomped out of the church and, you know, I, I ain't never going back there again. Why would he do that in front of people? Well, you know what? The, the reason why I handle things the way I handle things today is because I had a man of God in my life that wasn't afraid to speak the truth but I had to be the one to accept the truth and then walk it out. Because God has things that he needs to say to you and things that he needs you to understand that are not going to be comfortable sometimes and fit your liking. No, I'm not going to scold you. That's not my job. Do you understand? But I'm going to tell you this. God is getting us ready to be greater than we've ever been before. How about you? I mean, this is what he's doing to me. I'm telling you right now. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 16. You know, when we talk about growing, how many of you know one of the biggest ways that we grow, and I say this honestly, is learning how to deal with other people. Boy, you want to learn how to grow. Get around people who don't like you. And you're going to have to grow into some things. You know what I'm saying? Now, you can, you can make the choice. You know, I, I was in, um, in a Hardee's in West Virginia one day, and some guys that, at the table where I was at asked me a question about the Bible. How many of you know, you know people want to answer for the Bible? They're going to ask the preacher. You know, and, I, and they all knew I was a pastor, and I'm sitting there, and they asked me this question, and I answered the question. I even asked them, I said, do you understand it? And they said, yeah, 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 it makes sense to us. 
But there was this one guy that was in the restaurant, and he always read the paper. He never would have anything to do with us. And I got up because I'd, I'd run out of my drink, and I was going up to, to get a refill. And when I walked up, he, he jumped up in front of me, and he had a newspaper in his hand, and he rolled the newspaper up real tight and poked me in the chest with it. And said to me, what are you doing over there at that table talking that propaganda for? Love was not what I felt. Come on, y'all. Compassion did not come upon me. But can I tell you what happened? Anointing flowed because I, I kept myself, and I try to do this, I'm not perfect at it. But I try to stay in the spirit when things like that happen because I understand we're going to talk about this next week. You don't wrestle against, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, wickedness, spirits of wickedness. Now, so without, I mean, this happened in like, you know, he, he jumped up, poked me in the chest, and, uh, and just, I mean, not no little, I'm talking about boom, boom poked me in the chest. All these guys are, are sitting around watching this happen, and I know what they're thinking. Preacher's going to knock him out. Preacher's going to knock him out. I'm telling you, the preacher's going to put him in the floor. I grabbed the paper, and I looked at, it, at him, and I said, you weren't at the table, and you do, do good to mind your own business and stay out of mind. Do you understand me in Jesus' name? And you know what? He took the paper and put it down and walked away. And when I sat down, I felt so bad about it. But then I realized, guys, I what, di didn't do it in anger. I did it in correction. Because there was eight or nine people that I had told the word of God to. And the enemy always comes in to steal the word. And sometimes you got to handle the situation in a godly way. Come on, y'all. And that may not may not be just operating in, I'm talking about love, to where you just cow down and let things go. Sometimes you take authority. Now that guy came in and he sat down and he never did that to me again. Well, how many of you know? He knew better. But every time I walked by him, I would speak to him because I understood we had an understanding. And I would walk by him and I'd say, how are you doing today? And he'd look up at me and say, good, and go back to eating his biscuits and gravy. We got an understanding. What I'm trying to show you is this, guys. Listen to this. You got to learn how to deal with people, and no formula tells you exactly how to deal with everybody. You got to trust the Holy Spirit to lead you. And there's been some other times. I'll share some other things as we get into this. But listen to what it says in Ephesians 4. And we're talking about fellowshipping with other people. And I'll, and I'll show you this. It says, from whom the whole body. Everybody say whole body. How many of you know that's going to be people you like and people you don't like? The whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Guys, I'm telling you right now, there's sometimes you're going to have to put up with people you don't like. That's a part of being in love with the body. You know, and I, I've shared this story with you before. You know, Pam and I were in Pamplico, and we had a lady come in, and she was, she was rather a big lady, and, and she just she started getting to the point where she smelled real bad. To the point. Now listen to this, guys, and this is things that I don't think preachers are supposed to do, but sometimes preachers have to do. You know, to where we were worshiping one day, and she lifted her hands, and the people behind her had to move because she smelled so bad. Now, how many of you know I had to go to her and talk to her? And I did it in love. Listen to this. I'm being very honest. I did it in love, and I told her. I said, I said you know, you're starting to smell bad. And she went home, and she corrected the problem. That's not something I, I'm supposed to do. Do you understand? But sometimes, guys, we love people enough to tell them the truth. And that's what I'm trying to point out to you. Sometimes you just have to do it. And you don't do it in anger. Say amen with me. 
I know some of you didn't like that. <laughs> you don't do it in anger. You do it right because you know what? You edify the body, and when the body works together, she had a purpose, and God had her there for a reason. You got to understand, that's how the body grows. Now, you're going to have sometimes that you're going to have people that you just don't get along with. Can I get an amen? And how many of you know you're not going to agree with everybody 100% of the time? You're just not going to agree. You need to understand that. And, and this is one of the reasons why I'm, I'm pointing this out. Unfolding salvation in your life, when it begins to unfold, you will have the opportunity and have the anointing to be able to deal with things that other people cannot deal with. You need to understand that. I know this is going a little deeper than what I wanted it to, but listen to what it says in Acts 15 and verses 36 through 41. How, how many of you will say this with me? This is real. How many of you know life is real? And sometimes, guys, everything is not just peaches and cream. Do you understand? It's not. Christianity is not walking through a rose garden and there's no thorns. It's learning how to handle the stuff in life where the thorns don't get you. And having the anointing to deal with those things. And I, and I say that honestly. We have to deal with people on a daily basis. How many of you have to go to the store and deal with people sometimes you wish they'd have never got in front of you in the line? Be honest. I mean, it happens. Well, you've got to operate in love that way. You know, you can't just throw them out the store. Well, you could, but you don't want to. Acts 15 and verse 36. Then after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Verse 37. Now Barnabas was determined to take with him John called Mark. But Paul insisted that they should not take with them the one who had departed from them to Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. Verse 39. Are you all with me? Then the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being commended by the brethren to the grace of God. And they went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. I just wanted to show this to you guys. Even the apostles didn't get along all the time. Come on, y'all, there was contentions there too. I just wanted to show you this. But how many of you know you're responsible for operating in love? Come on, y'all, say it with me. you got to stay in love. And I've had people before tell me, you know, so-and-so, they just get under my skin. Well, then just seal your skin so it don't happen. Don't let people get under your skin. Handle it right. Well, amen. The simple truth of the matter is you're not going to like everybody that comes around you. But the love of Christ in you will teach you how to handle every situation that comes your way. Well, y'all got real quiet on this one. Truth is truth. Guys, I'll be honest with you. That, I mean, everybody I work with, I'm talking about on my jobs, they don't like me that much. But they, some of them don't like me at all. But they got my equipment and I get the job done. Now, some of them love me. Do you understand? I mean, there's one place I go and the, the, they just tell people, he's the best guy you ever meet. He's the best guy you ever meet. Well, you know, you're going to have some people that you're going to have that, that look at you the best, and you're going to have some people that you have sometimes that don't look at you as the best, but you're responsible for living your life right before God regardless of what other people think about you. As long as you stay true, and this is what I'm trying to get to, you want salvation to unfold in your life, don't get in hatred and bitterness over things that you can control. Come on, y'all. Could get an amen. Do we need some coffee? Come on, y'all. Don't let it happen. Just don't, don't let it get to you, you know. Don't let it get there. Don't let it get to that point. Don't, you know, operate in the love of God. Keep the love of Christ in you. Let, it, let the word of God dwell in you richly. Come on, y'all, say that word with me. Richly. So when you get around somebody and no matter what you do, it just seems like it's not right, you just live it out before God and let God deal with it. Do you understand? You just walk in love and you stay in love. And I, I've shared this story with you. I've, I've, I had one couple in ministry years ago 
Man, it just they were a thorn in my flesh. I'll just be honest with you. Just a thorn, and this is when I was associate pastor. But I forgave everything. Come on, y'all, say it with me. Forgiveness. Do you know what? That's, the, that's vital for you to have. You have to let it go because one day it's going to show up in front of everybody and if you haven't forgiven, it will expose itself in front of the whole crowd. So you have to just operate in forgiveness and let it go. And I told you this story. You know, a couple come up and ask me to forgive them in front of the whole church. I'm talking about, I mean, in front of... In front of everybody in church, walked up on the platform where I was and asked me to forgive them. And I looked at them and said, there's nothing to forgive. You know why? Because it had been done years ago. Deal with it right now. Don't let it become a root of bitterness in your life. How many of you want salvation to unfold in front of you like never before? Then allow God into every area of your life. Guys, this is practical, and I understand that. Some of you out there on Facebook, you might be going, this man's crazy. But I need you to understand something. If we'll learn how to honor God in every area of our lives, I'm telling you right now, we'll see God unfold more and more of his anointing and his purpose inside of us and to us, and we'll walk in the fullness that God says we can walk in. And sometimes it's not easy to handle the failures of other people. But you have to. And the way that you do it is you do it through the eyes of Christ. You do it through the love of God. Can I get an amen on that? And you don't let just one person doing something in your life knock you out of fellowship with God because if you do, it just proves you got your eyes on man instead of God. Tough word, huh? Let me look through my notes a little bit. Let me end it with this. Ephesians 6 and verse 10. I'm jumping ahead a little bit. I want to read this in the New King James and then I'm going to read it in the Amplified Bible. And this points out what I've been saying. How many of you know your relationship is everything when it comes to God? Come on, y'all. Give me an amen. Amen. But how many of you know your relationship is everything when it comes to people too? Listen to what it says here. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Can we read that together? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Did you get it? You be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And that brings everything you need into your life as far as God is concerned. Because now God is your source and not what happens. Now let's read it in the Amplified Bible and I'm going to close it out here. In the Amplified Bible, Ephesians 6.10. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him. That strength which his boundless might provides. Never let it come out of your mouth that situations going on in your life is too hard for you to handle. Because with God, all things are possible. And you can handle it. Oh, hallelujah. At least I finished on a good note, right? Happy note. With God, what does it say in the Passion? Go ahead. Yeah, read just the first verse. Amen. Isn't that good, guys? Listen, you may be facing things and you may be facing people and you may be facing situations. I'm telling you right now, I've learned this in my life and I'm being very transparent here that when I have things that happen that I do not understand, how many of you have it happen? I do not understand why some people act the way they act. I do not understand why some people are like they are. Do you understand? I stay in the love of God regardless. I stay in the love of Christ And I keep my union with God strong regardless of the circumstances. And every time that I do that, 
God brings, listen to this, and this is important for you to understand. Come on, y'all. Look at me for just a minute. This is important because this is what will happen. It will bring you victory in your life, and if you handle it right, it brings victory in their life too. Unfolding salvation affects more than just you. It affects the people that you come into contact with too. Can I get an amen? Well, let's pray because I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm done with this. Whew. It was a tough one, wasn't it? Not my fault. Pam wrote that down for me. No, I'm just joking, y'all. It was all, it was all God. Stand to your feet, if you will. Father, I thank you for the word. I know sometimes we come to church and we want to hear good things. And, and God, I like to be more funny than I do serious. But this is serious times that we're living in. And God, you have a purpose for us as a body of Christ. Is your church. And I believe you're sharpening us to be everything that you've called us to be. We've got to be effective ministers of your gospel. God, I've got a long way to go. How many of you say amen for yourselves? I've got a long way to go, God. There's some things that I need to grow up into. There's some things that I need to cut out of my life. There's some things I really need to hold on to and there's some things I really need to let go of. But God, I thank you. You care for us enough to speak into our lives about those things. So God, I pray for everybody here and everybody watching on Facebook. I thank you so much, God, for your anointing being released right now. You know, I'm going to do this a little bit different than I normally do. I'm not going to lead in a in a prayer of salvation tonight. But what I am going to do, guys, is I'm going to ask you to examine your heart and allow the Holy Spirit to speak into your life. Let him put his finger on some things that need to change. Let him into some of those rooms that you've kept closed off for too long now. Let him step in and let him bring light and life into areas of your life that because of situations and circumstances, have begun to dry up and die. See, God is a life giver. And he gives life in every area. And he wants to affect every area of your life. Amen, church? Amen. God, I thank you right now for your Holy Spirit. Part of his responsibility is to convict us. God, to bring purpose back. Bring reproof sometimes and correction. God, I'd much rather have correction from you the correction from a complete and total stranger in front of everybody I know. So God, we just need to surrender to your presence and surrender to your spirit. And God, let you help us get beyond some of the things that we have against people who have wronged us and against people who have spoken things against us. And God, we just need to get it all under the blood. Amen. Amen. All under the blood so that we can walk in freedom. God, I'm guilty of this myself, and it changed my life when I heard it. But I'm guilty of coming to the cross, but not going through it. And letting that resurrection life free me from all the stuff that tends to build up in me. So God, I thank you that your Holy Spirit leads us and guides us and changes us. Would you say amen, church? In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, can I thank you for being here tonight? Next week it won't be like this. I hope. No.